All right, welcome to lesson 9.2.3. Uh, today, talking about absolute value. Um, let's just get right in. Uh, on a calculator, a lot of times when you see, a lot of students have asked in the past, how do I do absolute value on a calculator? You will find on a calculator there is an ABS button um, for absolute value. So you put ABS, you put in parentheses the number that you want the absolute value for, and then parentheses and you'll see you'll get your answer. Now absolute value, um, and, and here's how I describe it usually. I think about it as a distance in driving a car. So for example, if I were to take a drive from Bloomington to Bemidji, I'm driving approximately 200 miles. Well, when I come back from Bemidji to Bloomington, would my car go back to zero miles because I came back the opposite direction? And most of you would laugh at that and say, well, of course not. No, you, you went an additional 200 miles, so now your car would read 400 miles. And my question would be, yeah, but, but I went backwards. I went back the other way. Why would it still, why would the odometer continue to go up? And you're going to say, well, because it's a distance, it, it, it adds on. And that's what absolute value is. It measures the distance from zero. Now, if you're going from zero to 200, it'll read 200. But if you're going from zero to negative 200, you're still traveling a distance of 200 miles. So um, absolute value is the measure from zero. So that's kind of what it thinks, uh, what it looks like. Also, the other thing I want you to look at is notice on your calculator, when you put in your ABS, your absolute value, it makes you put in parentheses. Absolute value bars are another parenthesis or a grouping symbol. So you, you may remember back when I talked about um, that, you know, the order of operations, you know, how you used to learn them as PEMDAS, and I've told you, no, that, that's actually wrong, it's GEMDAS. And, and the reason for the G versus the P is that G is for grouping symbols. You know, grouping symbols. Well, what are grouping symbols? Well, they're parentheses, as you can see right down here. They're absolute value. They're square root uh, bars. Um, and they're also a big division bar, and I can get into some of those later, but just so you understand, absolute value is one of those grouping symbols. It acts like parentheses. It's something you do first in order of operation. So let's take a look at what would I mean by that. <clears throat> if you look at letter B here, evaluate these expressions. So here I've got the absolute value of negative 100 minus 98. Like I told you, the absolute value bars act like a parenthesis. So we first need to find the absolute value of negative 100, which would be positive 100. Then I do the positive 100 minus 98, which would be 2. So the answer for this first here would be 2. As we look at this one over here, so we need to do the absolute value portion here first. So 2 minus 8, what's the absolute value of that? Well, 2 minus 8, what's inside of the grouping symbols, would be negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 would be positive 6. We take that positive 6, multiply it by 5, and we get 30. Moving on to this one. Now I've got two absolute value bars, so I need to do each one individually. So the absolute value of negative 13 is 13. The absolute value of 0 is 0. So 13 plus 0 would be 13. And then finally we come up with this one. So, and, and you want to be careful on this one, we still do the absolute value first. So the absolute value of negative 10 plus 3, well, negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. Then we do the 14 minus 7, which would be 7. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's move on. Number 47. Mr. Guo is thinking of a number. When he takes the absolute value of the number, he gets 15. So I want to think about this one for a second. I'm going to slide this over just for a moment here. We're taking the absolute value, so the ABS, of some number. We'll call that number X. And that number equals 15. So the question becomes, what is that number? Well, if you think about it, the absolute value of positive 15, so X equals 15, is 15. But also the absolute value of negative 15 would also work. So x in this case could be two different answers. Could be 15 or negative 15. Now how we state that is we don't do the second one here. We just simply say that x could be a plus slash minus the plus or positive or negative 15. And so that's how you can write that right there. Hopefully that makes sense for you. 
But now, let's just take this up one quick level here. What if we had an equation where we said that um, <clears throat> the absolute value of x minus 4 equals 10, for example. So we have the absolute value of x minus 4 equals 10. How you set this equation up? Because we just got done saying that x could be a positive value or x could be a negative value, but now it's within an equation. So how do you do that? Well, here's how you do that. So this becomes two equations. First equation is x minus 4, which is what's within the absolute value, can equal the 10, just as is stated in the first one. But then there's a second way you can do this, which is x minus 4 equals the opposite of 10, or negative 10. And then we have to solve these algebraically. So on the first one here, x minus 4 equals 10, add 4 to both sides, and we get x equals 14. On the second one here, we add 4 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 6. As we add 4 to here, that totals negative 6. So these two down here, x equals 14 and x equals negative 6, are two examples of what will satisfy this equation. Let's put them in and find out. So we plug in the positive 14. 14 minus 4 would be 10. The absolute value of 10 would equal 10. Now if we plug in negative 6, negative 6 and negative 4 makes negative 10. The absolute value of negative 10 would be positive 10. So that's how you can check both your answers to make sure they're right. So hopefully that makes sense to you and how those equations work right there. Awesome. If you need to go back to that, you can do that. All right, slide this back over to where it was. Let's see if there's anything else I need to cover here. What's on question 48? Ah, graphing of an absolute value. Absolutely. Now, you may have noticed we just took the absolute value of x, and we noticed when we did that, um, when we said, for example, if x equals, uh, or if y equals 2, which is right up here, then x could be either the positive 2 right here or the negative 2 over here. So if you think about graphing that, if x equals 2, y equals 2, but if x equals negative 2, y also equals a positive 2. So an absolute value graph makes this ray where it, it comes down until it hits zero, and then it starts making the mirror image of itself go in the other direction. Now, what if we were to do things like add into that, um, where it adds one or something like that? So let me see if I can do that here. Here we go. X equals, or Y equals X plus one. Now here's what I want you to think about for that one. I'm going to just check something out here real quick. In fact, here it is on this next one. Nope, nope, that's not quite what I wanted to do here. Let me see if I can build. What the heck happened to there? Not there. There we go. So let's see if I can build this graph very quickly. So I'm going to take and find my graphing tools. We'll pull the graph out there. Perfect. And then we're going to pull this over to the side real quick. I need to make a couple arrows. Actually, before I make the arrows, let me lock this in place. And then let me make my arrows. And make one more here. Perfect. Now we're going to take and we're going to group those two so they're together. And I'm going to lock that but allow the move on this one. Lock and allow move. Now those should be solid lines but I don't have time to do that. Now, here's what I want you to think about. If x plus 1 equals y, what does x have to equal to make y 0? Which is the point where they come down. If you said that x has to be a negative 1, Come on. Could have sworn I said allow moving up, but maybe I did not. If you said that it would have to be a negative one, you'd be correct. Okay? And just the same thing if this had been y equals x minus 5, for example, the absolute value of x minus 5, it would take a positive 5 to make that cancel. 
So anything inside the absolute value moves the graph, but moves the graph in the opposite direction. So if this is a pop x plus 4, you know it takes a negative 4 to cancel that out. And if this is an x plus or x minus 3, for example, then it takes a positive 3 to cancel that out. Now, if there's anything on the outside of absolute value bars, okay, anything over here. So if this was absolute value of x plus 1, which would be graphed right here, but then there's something on the outside, like plus 2 or plus 3 or something like that. That means that y can never become 0 anymore. So what that does is shifts it in the same direction, but this direction. So if there's a plus 2 on the outside, then the whole graph shifts up 2. If there's a minus 3 on the outside, then that would shift the whole graph, that didn't quite go all the way I wanted, to a negative 3. So hopefully that makes sense. So if I were to take and graph, for example, the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 5 equals y, okay? So we first take care of what's inside the parentheses right here. So we're going to take the x minus 4. Well, what does it take to cancel a negative 4? It takes a positive 4. So we move it out to here. Then we have the plus 5, which is a constant here. It shifts the whole y graph all the way up to here. And this is what our graph would look like. So what it took to cancel the negative 4 inside the absolute value bars, and then the plus 5 after that. Hopefully that makes good sense to you. Shifting this back over. And so this one now, this one adds in one more little degree. It says the absolute value of 2x. Now you're going to notice 2x minus 1. What does x have to be to cancel out the negative 1? Well, x would have to be a half of 2. Because if x is a half, then 2 times a half would be 1. 1 minus 1 cancels. So that's why you're going to find right here, this is in between 0 and 1 and a half. But then you're going to notice that x goes up twice as fast. So you're going to see that this goes up very quickly. It's a thinner, it's a, it's a steeper slope for both here and here. It goes up twice as fast. If this had been a 3x, this would go up three times as fast, if that makes sense. Versus if this had been something like, say, 1 half x over here, then this would be a much flatter slope because it would go up uh, much slower. All right, and that takes care of our lesson for today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.